नमस्ते वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग प्रैक्टिस कोर्स इन दिस वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू सिलेक्ट एंड ट्रेन मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल दिस इज स्टेप नंबर फाइव इन आर एंड टू एंड मशीन लर्निंग प्रोजेक्ट इन दिस स्टेप विल टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू सिलेक्ट अ मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल दैट कैन बी अप्लाइड ऑन द प्रॉब्लम एट हैंड so it generally happens that when we are solving a machine learning problem and we get the data we we are not sure what kind of machine learning model to use in this case it's a good practice to build a quick baseline model on the preprocessed data and get an idea about model performance so in this case in the case of wine quality prediction since the quality is a number we can use linear regression model as a quick baseline once we train once we train the regression model we can evaluate its performance on both the training as well as test sets we can use mean squared error as an evaluation measure so on the training set we obtain mean square error of 0.42 we evaluate the performance on the test set where we first apply the transformation on the test set same as the training set and then apply the model prediction function so we have the test set here we apply the same pipeline that the the transformation pipeline the test set as a training set and then we calculate the mean squared error on the on the test set so these are the actual labels and these are the predicted label from from our model we compare these two and calculate mean squared error through a sklearn function the mean squared error on the test set is 0.39 let us visualize the error between the actual and predicted value so here what we'll do is we'll we'll have a scatter plot that will that will plot the actual wine quality which is the actual label and the predicted quality so each for each example we can see a dot here that that shows this for this particular point the actual quality was 3 and we predicted the quality somewhere between 4 and 5 here the actual quality was 8 and we predicted quality which is slightly less than 7 so this particular plot shows that the model seems to be making an error uh, model seems to be making errors on the best and poor quality wines so on either extremes the model is not performing that well on the other hand for average quality wines model seems to be performing fairly well now that we have a quick baseline we can try to build other other regressor models decision tree regressor is is another such regression model we are yet to study this in machine learning techniques course but in the later weeks of the course we are going to study decision tree regressor model in this case what we'll use what we'll do is we'll use the decision tree regressor as provided by the scikit learn package we import the decision tree regressor and and call the fit function on the training set at this point i would uh, like you to notice a similarity between two code snippets in case of linear regression we had linear regression object on which we call the fit function and in decision tree regressor we have a tree regression object on which we call the fit method and we, you can see that the fit method takes the same kind of parameters these are the features of the wine and this is a label and this happens due to a nice code design by sklearn library both linear regressor and decision tree regressor are instances of estimator class 
in, in the second week, we will be discussing about design principles of SKLearn library in the overview of SKLearn, uh, SKLearn lecture. That time, some of these similarities uh, will be more clear to you. You can see that the tree regressor obtains a zero training error and uh, the test error is 0.58. As you may notice based on our discussion that this is an example of the overfitted model. Let's look at the plot of the actual quality versus the predicted quality. And you can see that the predictions are all over the place. We can use cross-validation for robust evaluation on, of model performance. We have discussed cross-validation in detail in machine learning techniques course. Here we can use cross-validation score for evaluating the performance of the model. The cross-validation provides separate a mean squared error for each validation set. We can use this separate mean squared error on different validation set to get a mean estimation of, of MSE as well as the standard deviation. The standard deviation helps us to determine how precise is the estimate across different folds. Of course, there is an additional cost that we pay with, uh, with additional training runs because in cross-validation what we do is we end up training the model on different folds. So there are multiple training runs that are involved. This can be too expensive in certain cases. So this is a small code snippet where we are calculating the mean score and the standard deviation from different cross-validation folds. And this scores actually shows the raw MSE score from different folds of cross-validation. Let's calculate the cross-validation score on linear regressor. So in the cross-validation score function, we pass the, the estimator object which is linear regression in this case, the feature set, the label set, the scoring method and a and, and number of folds that we want to use here, we use 10 folds for cross validation. We will be studying in detail what this cross validation score function does as well as what this scoring means in, in the subsequent weeks. In this case, we obtain different uh, scores. Uh, there are 10 different scores, one MSE for each fold. So from these 10 different values, we calculate the mean which, which comes out to be 0.43 and the standard deviation is 0.08. You can see that the MSE varies by fold. The lowest MSE is obtained on fold number uh, 5, right? it is 0.29 and the highest MSC is obtained on, on the first fold which is 0.56. So the average comes out to be 0.43 and the standard deviation is 0.08. We can apply the same kind of cross validation on the decision tree regressors. Let's look at the scores from the decision tree regressor. Again, these are 10 different scores from different folds and you can see that there is, uh, there is a wide uh, variability. The highest uh, MSC is 1.07, whereas the lowest MSC uh, seems to be 0.46. And of course, it's a, uh, and this is a scoring method. This is a scoring method and this scores uh, that we have uh, is basically negative mean squared error. We take minus of that. So we have mean squared errors and uh, in this case, the lower mean square, uh, squared error uh, indicates a better model. We get a mean of 0.68 and the standard deviation of 0.16. So if we compare these scores with the linear regression scores, you know, we, we find that linear regressor is, uh, has got a better MSE as well as more precise estimation compared to decision tree. It was, uh, it was 0.43 in case of linear regression 
and the standard deviation there was 0 0.08 which is smaller compared to the deviation obtained from uh, decision tree. Ensemble learning methods have often found to improve the performance of machine learning models. Here we define a random forest regressor that was that was imported from sklearn.ensemble package. We call the fit function on the random forest regressor uh, in order to train the model. And then we calculate the cross validation score on, on the training set. Here we uh, obtain the mean of 0.34 and standard deviation of 0.07. In case of random forest regressor, you can also see a variability, but that this variability is much less compared to uh, the previous two models. Here the mean is 0.34 and the standard deviation is 0.07. We can also calculate the mean squared error on the test sets. The mean squared error on the test set is 0.34. And just like linear regression model, so random forest model is slightly better than a linear regression model and uh, you know you can also see similar traits like linear regression model. It works well on most of the y inequalities except for the extreme ones. So the poor quality and the best quality wines are, are kind of not predicted that well even by the random forest model. But random forest is more promising than linear regression and decision tree models. It is a good practice to build a few such models quickly without tuning their hyperparameters and shortlist a few promising models among them. We also need to save these models to disk in Python using pickle format. So once we have the model, uh, you might be wondering what is what are the next steps. Once we have the model, we often perform model diagnostics in order to find out whether model is suffering from underfitting or overfitting. We have discussed the ideas of underfitting and overfitting and how to overcome them in machine learning techniques course. If your model is underfitting, we uh, we need to uh, you know uh, so basically the problem is that our model does not have enough capacity and we can fix it by using models with more capacity by using let's say something like polynomial features. If you are applying too much of regularization then also model can underfit. In that case we can reduce the amount of regularization or the constraints. On the other hand in case of overfitting what happens is model has excess capacity because of which model is pretty much able to memorize the training data. It, it gets us almost perfect predictions on the training set but it fails to generalize on the test set. We can fix the overfitting problem by getting more data or trying simple model or we can apply more constraints or regularization in order to prevent the overfitting problem. So once we have once we have modeled, once we have shortlisted some of the promising models, the next step is fine-tuning the model. We'll talk about fine-tuning in detail in the next video.